Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and this is What's On My iPhone. I'm doing this video because so many of you guys liked my What's On My iPad video that I uploaded for you on Christmas Day that I figured I'd do a What's On My iPhone video on New Year's Day, and I hope you like this video as well, as well as the other videos we do for you in the Locker Gnome YouTube channel, and I'm assuming that you've subscribed, that you're following me on Twitter and Facebook and Google+, and wherever you can find me on the web, including LockerGnome.com. So, before I go too deep into this, just like I did with the What's on My iPad video, uh, and I know many of you liked this particular part of it, uh, I did not buy, with my own money, a lot of the paid applications on iOS, whether it's the iPhone, uh, the iPad, or the iPod Touch, if I still had one. I use a series of apps that you can download and install for free outside of the App Store. The links for you are directly in this video's description. Tap them from your iOS device. Uh, a long-standing uh, uh, application I've used to generate points by downloading sponsored applications through it, uh, and of course sharing the links with others, is go.tagjag.com slash free apps. And I have I've picked up so many free Amazon cards, uh, so many iTunes gift cards. It is so easy and it's free. I honestly, I can't even remember the last time I paid for an application because even if I wasn't exchanging for a, a gift card, they also have ways you can download paid applications directly from this platform. Another one that I found out about uh, just recently is go.tagjag.com slash free credits. Works much the same way, although I haven't really had a chance to use it all that much, so I, I don't know if it really is as, as good as the go.tagjag.com slash free apps. This is a good one, go.tagjag.com slash free slots, a third one, yes, and this one is a, more of a game of chance. So you uh, get credits, you spin the uh, slot machine, and you know you get a random series of uh, well icons, and then whatever they add up to, well, you get those coins, and then you can exchange those coins for paid applications, uh, gift cards, or what have you. Now, my favorite one uh, to generate points, and this is a new one, uh, and I just found out about it, uh, well, really in the middle of last week, and it's been amazing. Go.tagjag.com slash free points. My favorite of all four of them that I'm using at this point in time. Tons of sponsored applications. And so you can just download a, just a couple of them and automatically have the ability to exchange them for applications that are popular that would normally cost you money. And, and that's it. And of course, if you share the link like I do with other people, you can generate more points. And I have a lot of points right now. I have earned PayPal cards, Amazon cards, uh, iTunes cards. I don't pay for them anymore because these apps that allow you to download sponsored apps are my favorite apps of all time. Come on! That, in many ways... Just generating these points through go.tagjag.com slash feature points, I think I've earned enough across all those platforms uh, to have paid for my iOS devices. I mean, they're, they work really, really well. I'm not kidding either. Let me see here. I'll go into settings just to show you. Points history, rewards. I mean, I, this, these things really came in. They, they really happened. Look at what I've exchanged. This, is, I, this was, to me, free money. They just handed it to me. Here, download sponsored application, share the link, and we'll give you stuff. Okay, it's perfectly legal. Legal? Legal? I don't know what legal really translate as. Uh, translate? Boy, I'm just tripping up over my words. All right, now that I've shown you uh, how to get free applications and free gift cards on your iOS device, might you know make up the difference for you paying for it uh, i'm going to go ahead and move through the rest of my ios device just to give you a high level overview i have one two three four four and a half ish pages of folders those aren't individual apps i'll go back to the first page uh, up at the top i've got the calendar uh, i do not have that in the dock like i do uh, with the ipad you might note i also use weather live as an icon uh, one of my frustrations with ios is that they don't really use the icons like they could like see i get you know an idea of right now i'm recording it a, a couple of days early because you know i'm going to be doing other things on new year's day uh the 30 changes uh, to 31 or one or two depending on the day and of course the uh, month sh or i'm sorry the day shows up as well i wish they did that with the weather icon but they don't i don't know why so i use weather live and what they do is it's kind of a little trick uh, that number there is 39 so it's telling me it's 39 degrees fahrenheit right now that's kind of neat. 
Uh, I put the uh, photos icon next to that since I do browse photos frequently enough on here. Uh, and then I've got the uh, camera app, the default camera app up top so it's easy to get to. Right underneath that, and I'm going to I'm gonna go to the second row and then down to the bottom here, uh, I have all of my favorite camera apps and I have quite a few. So let me show you a couple of the, the ones that I, I, I honestly can't live without. My favorite one, and I've featured this so many times, ClearCam. Now, they have not yet updated this for the latest iPhone, but uh, it, it works well enough. Basically, you launch it, you tap this button, it takes a series of six images, and then only keeps the clearest image, throws the rest of them out. Because so many times, you know, you just want a clear image. You don't want any blur or shake or anything like that. ClearCam delivers every single time. Not perfect, definitely buggy. They haven't updated in a while, but I talked to, de to the developer recently and they say that they are working on a new version, which I'm very, very grateful for. I love that app because all I want is a clear photo. That's the app I go to for clear photos instantaneously. I also have Camera Plus installed. I think just about everybody does. Uh, then we have, uh, let me just uh, go through some of my other favorites. Uh, Gyro Lens is a, a camera that takes advantage of the gyroscope. So essentially, it is trying to align the uh, image itself to be running parallel to the lines in what, what it, the camera lens sees. So you're never going to take a shot that you have to go in and tweak afterwards to you know make even. So instead of your horizon being like this, you could launch this application and no matter how you're holding the camera, the horizon in the photo or the resulting photo will turn out like that. So gyro lens is another uh, nice little uh, application for that. I have four HDR dedicated uh, apps. The one that seems to produce the best HDR images to this point is HDR photo. Now, yes, uh, the camera does have HDR built in and it works fairly well. Uh, but if you want, you know, a bit more tweaking and let's go here, I'm just dragging one area onto a dark or a little a box onto a dark area, the other box onto a light area, pressing the camera button, trying to hold still, and then it pretty much does the rest. And yep, continue. Works pretty fast on the iPhone 5, by the way. And then you've got a resulting image that has a high dynamic range. And that's what HDR stands for. Uh, HDR photo, I don't know how much it costs, but you know, many of these apps are like a buck or two, if that. So hey, you know, give it a shot. Light painting is fun. If you uh, have seen my avatar where I'm, I'm uh, drawing my signature in air using one of those laser lights. This is an application that will allow you to do just that with the iPhone instead of using uh, a DSLR or a camera that allows you to open up the shutter for an extended period of time. You could use this application to make a light painting if you want. DMD or Dermandar is a great way to make a panoramic image. Uh, I think it does a little better than the default Apple a panoramic image that they uh, just enabled with the, the recent uh, release. Um, Dermandar it has been free at times, so if it costs money, you can skip it until it's free. Uh, another one I like is II Camera. I featured this in the What's on My iPad uh, as, as well as, the, uh, well, I'm featuring this one. Let me see here. I'm going to do my, wait, is it facing the right way? No, okay. So it's trying to, let's do this. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it so that you can see exactly what it does. Ah, tap the wrong one there. Let's do this. So there's my face, and then I can scroll through a variety of effects, and then it changes my eyes or something over my eyes. Does it? Or my? Oh wait, I'm sorry, my eyes weren't there. There we go. I'm in love with you. It's a little tricky to uh, do this the way that I'm doing it, but hopefully it translates. It's a fun little application that allows you to dynamically change uh, your eyes or someone else's eyes, and it's kind of fun. Time warp. This is another good one. Uh, if you need something quick. And, and simple, uh, as soon as you tap that camera button, what happens is it starts snapping a series of photos and then you can scroll back because it started taking the photos even before you press the button. It is so nice. And again, you can choose just the best and save just the best. So it took a series of photos. And that's a good thing if you know, you're trying to capture a moment, but, you know, high action, your dog's running around, your kid's running around, something's happening. That is the camera app you would want to use to make sure you snap the action. And let's face it, most people use uh, their phone as 
their default camera. I know I do, other than you know when I record the vlogs and then I use a, a, another a special camera, which I've talked about before. I'm not going to go into it right now. Passbook is right here, so I can get to it with a relative degree of ease. I use the App Store very frequently. I am an app addict, no doubt about it. Settings right there because, again, sometimes I want to get to settings quickly. Now, the bottom, as I said, I'm going to come down here. I've got messages, which I use, uh, phone, uh, mail. These are absolute must-haves. And then, and some people didn't even know they could do this. You could put folders down here in, in, in the dock. They call that the dock on iOS? I don't know. I'm, I'm calling it the dock down here. So I put all my web apps down into a folder. Safari goes there. I've got a, short to, a shortcut to Google Docs, YouTube, the web version, not the app. There's the uh, free apps, the go.tagjag.com slash free apps, go.tagjag.com slash, uh, uh, sorry, free points. Sorry, I'd like, there's so many links. to Just click the links that are in this video's description. Uh, I've got the uh, web app to Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus in here as well. And then if I get any other kind of shortcuts for web applications, I would stick them in there. So now on to the next row. I frequent social sites, as many of you do. I use TweetBot as my default uh Twitter application. I cannot stand the Twitter app. Yes, I know it's free, but it sucks. It's not as configurable. Uh, it's not as easy to browse. Uh, I, I just find myself loving the interface in TweetBot. Like, I want search. I want a quick way to know who's talking about me, who's talking about Locker Gnome, and right here from the tray, I can jump to any particular item that I want. I can define those uh, shortcuts for myself. So I love TweetBot. I hope it doesn't go away. I hope they continue to make it better over time. There's the Facebook app, which I'm not going to dive into. You guys know about that one. Uh, Google+, Plus. love Google+. Plus. Good experience on the iPhone, just a bit of stutter with Google Apps on iOS. Still, not bad. Uh, Instagram, right there. Uh, then I've got the official YouTube app, which they've made better, by the way. I don't know if you guys have used it in, in recent builds, but uh, now, uh, at least in version 2. Point, or the second version, I don't know if it's 2.0 yet, uh, the second released version, it's actually gotten better. Foursquare, Flickr, I'm on Flickr, I've been on Flickr, I've been Flickr Pro for years, that's where that app is. A LinkedIn, Colloquy, which is an IRC application, there is where my Locker Gnome app sits in the social folder. We will be updating the free Locker Gnome app for iOS and Android within the next month or two, I've been told. It will be uh, able to, well, I'm sorry, not just able. Uh, we're adding new features, but it will be native to the iPhone 5 screen and, it, of course, be backwards compatible to old iOS devices as well. We're also working on native iPad functionality. And if your push notifications are not working, if you installed the free Locker Gnome app, we're working on fixing that as well. So stay tuned for an update. Don't give up on me. Don't give up on us. We're trying to make it good for you. I have Clout installed here, not that I ever use it. And then another application that I'm not going to launch because it's got people's contact information, a free app called CoBook. And this basically scans your address book, your Twitter feed, your Facebook feed, and unifies people's social accounts into one contact. And it does a, a better job at it than Apple does. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple acquired this thing at some point in the near future. It does an amazing job. Probably the closest thing that iOS has to what Windows Phone does natively. And that's probably the easiest way to explain it for those of you who are familiar with how Microsoft kind of aggregates the contact list rather than, you know, by social app. It it, it, it organizes it by person, and that person has this account, that account, this account, this account. And so CoBook is a more socially apt address book or contact list than the default address book or really any other address book that I've found for any platform. Next, I have the utilities. These are the defaults that iOS ships with that I use frequently enough or, you know, are just there because this is where I know, well, these are the apps that come installed. I can't do anything with them. Calculator, I mean, I can't delete them. Clock, blah, 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 blah. You obviously know those applications. Next to that, I have all of Apple's apps, which you have to download. Um, you know, I've got, you know, the Apple Store, which is a really cool app if you've ever gone into the Apple Store because you can check out yourself. I featured that in a vlog a few weeks ago. It was kind of neat. I didn't even realize you could do that. Uh, Apple's done an amazing job with that application, at least. Find my iPhone remote since I have Apple TVs. Uh, airport utility since I have airports. That's how I uh, get, get onto the wireless network here at home. iMovie in here. I don't use it all that often or as much as I used to. Uh, iBooks, find my friends, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then we have navigation. This is where I have Apple's Maps. This used to live at the top of uh, my iPhone, and then I moved it uh, when, when iOS 6 was released. In here, 
I also have Google Maps installed, but you can see that that's not Google Maps. It is the mobile version of Google Maps, and I'll explain why in, in, in just a second. Because I have the Google Maps version, of, well, the native version, over here. This is the web version. This is the native version. In case there's a discrepancy, I could use either one. It's not a big deal. Uh, then I have Scout, which is also a web-based application that allows me to navigate without... It's not an app. It's a web app. That's just a shortcut on there. Uh, then I've got Waze, which is the best... One of the best nav tools out there. Certainly socially connected nav tool. Waze is number one in my book. I've got Nokia Maps. It's a web app installed there. The WSDOT app, uh, which if I want to see uh, webcams of traffic patterns, I would launch that one. So I've got a nav folder. I have not had a problem with uh, Apple's Maps. Other people have, but now Google Maps is out. Not a big deal. Input output. One of my favorite folders, uh, I've got scan, which is the way that I basically scan in QR codes or any kind of code that looks like a QR code. I haven't connected with Facebook. That is the new version. If I want to generate my own QR code, I launch QQR. And with that, I can create my own QR code. And then, okay, create. Well, if I type something in or, or edit something, I can create it, but I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, I've got the Microsoft Tag app installed, just in case I run across a Microsoft Tag. doesn't happen all that often. Uh, if I want to dictate audio, there is a, a dedicated app uh, called Remote Dictate, so I can basically uh, have more control over dictation than through the regular old voice memo app that a comes with Apple. I've also got Dragon Dictation that's free. I use iTalk to do a lot of audio recording as well. Noogle Noggles. Uh, it hasn't been updated in a while. It was uh, originally created as a, an iOS version of Google Goggles before Google had Google Goggles for iOS. Uh, in terms of my scanning, I use my phone as my default scanner. Uh, I had used JotNot Pro in the past, but I got to tell you, I'm extremely happy with TurboScan. Not the prettiest app in the bunch, but it works fast. You tap the button, it, 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 the, the LED flashes, it scans in the document, converts it to black and white, it does a really good edge detection, and I generate PDFs like that. I've got a, an office all-in-one scanner behind me. I can't remember the last time I used it as a scanner. It's so much easier to use that app, TurboScan. And if that, I, I think I got that for free. Like, is it, uh, the price dropped on it, and I'm like, oh, sure, I'll give it a shot, see if it's better than what I'm using. It's an app. Uh, but even if it's, honestly... If that's $5, you should still get it. It's the best scanning app I've found out there. Prismo, in case I want to do any kind of OCR, optical character recognition, that's my go-to app for that. If I wanted to identify a font that I saw somewhere, I would use the What the Font application. Uh, I've got my SoundCloud app there, although I don't use SoundCloud all that much. Now, here's something. Gosh, now I wish I had an item to show you. I just found out about this application. It's free. And it's, a, it's apparently been developed by someone who lives in the Seattle area. Paper Karma. You get junk mail, right? And it, it, comes, to your, uh, it comes to your office. It comes to your home. Uh, let me just show you this example because this is something that came to my business address. I'm getting this magazine, Seattle Business. I'm, I don't even know how I got it. What you do with this app, you put your junk mail down. You take a picture of it so long as your address shows and the name of whatever it is, including potentially a return address, and then you submit it and then they will cancel it for you. So they will help you cancel all those junk magazines and junk mail for free. It is so easy. Like this was just, it was an amazing find. Now I, I kind of look forward to getting junk mail because I scan it and you can see uh, request status. I've only done it about six times, but each time it says, hey, we submitted you know, this as you, know, you possibly getting removed from the, the mailing list. I've been waiting for something like this for years. Free. Paper Karma. Love it. Amazing app. This is what I love about apps. It turns this from a phone into a computer. You know, you, you, the app turns it into whatever that app makes it, whether it's a scanner, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, it's a telephone, uh, a web a browser, whatever that app is. That's what the computer becomes. I mean, it's the same screen. It's the same device. But these apps unlock so much potential. That's why Honestly, that's why I find myself addicted to apps. I love finding things that are truly transformative that allow me to do something I couldn't do before. I've always been a software junkie, though. Uh, next to that, we have my video folder, Filmic Pro, uh, probably one of the more full-featured video recording applications for iOS. Then I have Video Slides. I don't use that all that much. A stabilizer app in case I needed to stabilize a video that I had recorded before. 
Uh, there's Cinema FXV to uh, basically go in and apply different filters to videos that I'd recorded. Movie Stiller, again, one of those uh, stabilization apps. Collabor Cam, and I talked about this in the uh, iPad uh, video, basically allows you to connect multiple iOS devices together with one as the director, and then the director can control which iOS device camera is being toggled at the time to create one seamless video from a variety of cameras on different devices. Amazing. Helium Booth, kind of fun. Uh, so, uh, all right, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do this real quick. I don't know if it's going to, let's flip the camera around, make sure I've got it turned up. I usually keep my phone muted, by the way. Hey, everybody, I'm just talking and doing this video so that everyone knows what's on my iPhone. Ooh, this hasn't been updated for our, uh, my iPhone 5 yet. And do that, and let's go ahead and press play. So it heliumizes your voice on, on video. Uh, that's what that does. Uh, there's Cartoonatic or Cartoonatic. And I, I actually, I think I featured this separately in a video a long time ago. Uh, no, I, I usually turn pu push notifications off unless it's news. That's just, that's just me. Uh, yeah, I just want to start it. Uh, you can do live uh, filters on video that are kind of cartoony, which I, I think is, it's fun. You swipe to go back and forth between the different filters. Love that. Totally cool, of course, if I don't want to have vertical video, which sucks. Isn't that cool? Live, dynamic. It's it's great. Uh, I don't know. I think it was 99 cents, but still, you know, 99 cents. It's not that much. Uh, action movie uh, is how you can basically create an action movie. Try it. Seriously, it, you can add effects like explosions and stuff to your videos. It's so, so easy. Uh, there's the quick broadcaster for Ustream uh, right there. And then, oh, this one I just featured in a, a vlog, and I think TLDR, the Locker Gnome Daily Report, uh, the other day. I'm going to do my best to demonstrate it here. Cycloramic, 99 cents. Uh, let's do this. This is how I demonstrated it the other day, and you'll understand why in just a second. With Cycloramic installed, what you can do, and it's specifically designed for the uh, iPhone 5, is you tap the screen, watch what happens. It spins around on its own on a flat surface, and it is recording a video at this point in time without me touching it. It's recording a video. No audio, though, because all it would get is v v v from the bottom as it's spinning itself around, taking a panoramic video for you. That's awesome. I mean, there are a few shortcomings to it. Namely, it's creating currently a, a vertical video, which is not all that much fun, but it created a panoramic video without me touching it. I... Genius! I mean, just how did they figure that out? I've got a panoramic video on here. I don't see. I, you know, if you give me the right app, I just fall in love with it. Right, here we go. I'm just. I'll show you the video that we just recorded right there. You saw it happen, dude. You try it yourself if you have an iPhone five. I believe it'll work with other iPhones, although they've optimized it for the hardware on the iPhone five. So there I am, flailing around, saying, "Hey, there's what's going on. Check it out." Blah 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 blah. It's pretty cool. All right. So that's, uh, I think it's pretty much the video folder, okay? Then we have my visuals folder. And I like this folder because if I want to just kind of zone out and just touch the screen and find fantastic, awesome, fun effects, I use this application. Cosmic Tap is one of my favorites. And I'll show you why in just a second. It's not a game. What it does is it generates a random series of patterns that I can go around and it's, it's, they're called tops. And then I can spin them around, pinch to zoom, Zoom in and out, double tap to go to the next top, zoom in and out, double tap, tap. Look at that. It's just fun. It's it's mindless. And you can spin it faster and faster and faster. It's a visual application. It's fun for me to just see it and zone out. Gravilux, one of my favorites. Uh, it creates uh, gravity as your finger swipes around. It pulls all those dots in together. Psh fun. See, not everything you do on the iPhone has to be functional, certainly. Uh, and then Chilui, uh, or Chilui, Chilui. I don't know how to say this guy's name. He's an artist, like a famous artist that blows glass here in Seattle. And you can create your own uh, Chewy app, or you can browse other people's Chewy apps. So now, to blow the glass, I just blow into the the microphone, and then it blows the glass out, and then I can pinch it and go. It's fun. You, seriously, you have to blow into the microphone. Well, you don't 
have to. You should, though, if you're going to be blowing glass on your iPhone. So a few other uh, visual apps, including uh, Meritum Paint. Uh, and I like this one because uh, it's it's a fun way. So let's go with the black camera. They've added so many features since I first downloaded this. You can swipe and paint. I don't know if the colors are really coming out in this video here, but... And you can tweak different colors and whatnot, but it's kind of like finger painting with the iPhone screen. Fun. A uh, few other apps, very uh, similar in nature in there. Uh, and then we'll go on to my Google folder, which is exploding. At some point, uh, I'm going to have to start moving other Google apps into other folders. Well, you know I already have Google Plus in my social folder and the Google Maps in the nav folder. It makes sense because, you know, those are where those apps sit. However, uh, I, I don't have any other individual folders for any of these other icons, but I do have pretty much every one of Google's apps installed at this point. I may remove a, a couple. A, 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 you know, I don't use Latitude at all. Uh, nor do I really use offers. Google offers kind of sucks, but it's there and it's free, so eh, why not? Um, Google Drive, naturally, I live off Google Drive, love Google Drive, swear by Google Drive. It's where I do all my document editing. You can do that now on iOS. Google Chrome, I, of course, have installed that being my current default browser. I have a Google TV and they have a remote. They haven't updated it in a while. I mean, you want to talk about a nav night? Look at that. That's a nightmare. Whoever designed this remote application they didn't do a very good job. It, just, it was just, ah, I don't, my eyes don't know where to focus. It's, Google's not exactly well known for its UI prowess. Uh, they definitely need to update that remote app to make it more user-friendly. Love the default Google app because I can talk to it and say, where's the best place to get a good pizza in Seattle? Neat. Uh, if you haven't downloaded the free Google app, you should. It's wonderful. I also love the Translate app, which does need to be updated, like, severely. Uh, this is the app I used to communicate with Diana's mom when she was staying with us. Love that application. Very easy to use. Google Earth, of course. And then uh, the YouTube Capture tool. Fantastic. Uh, I love this tool, if only because you cannot record vertical video with the Capture tool. And you can upload it directly to YouTube. Haven't used it yet because I don't do a lot of that uh, on the go with this phone, at least not in the Locker Room YouTube channel. Uh, but still, I am very, very grateful that uh, Google has released it. I don't use Playbooks uh, or the Google Play Bookstore. Uh, if I have any kind of books, they're usually in my uh, Kindle library because I can get to my Amazon account from pretty much any uh, application or any platform, sorry. I have a brand media folder with a handful of uh, you know news sources that I use or entertainment sources. Uh, so I've got my Xfinity TV remote, Netflix, uh, Amazon Instant Video, since I'm an Amazon Prime member, pay $80 a year. So worth the money if you use Amazon at all. I also talked about the hourly news application on uh, the What's on My iPad app. I also have that on the iOS device. Uh, BBC, CNN, NPR, uh, you know, must-haves. HBO Go, since I'm an HBO subscriber. Can't wait for Season 3, Game of Thrones. It hasn't been released at the time of this recording, uh, so I, 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 I can't wait to see it. Uh, reading folder comes next. Uh, comics, in case they come in, there's my Kindle app. Uh, Flipboard, love Flipboard. Also like Zite. Uh, I keep some other browser applications in here as well, including uh, Skyfire, which I use if I run across a Flash video. I use Skyfire to uh, view it. Instapaper, I don't use all that much. Uh, I know some people swear by it. Uh, Pulse is another one of my favorites. Haven't used it on the iPhone because I uh, usually will digest news on my iPad or iPad mini. Uh, unless I'm on the go, in which case I'm using the iPhone. And I also have this app called web to pdf Got it for free. Basically, it's an easy way to print a web page as a PDF and then save it locally or send it out uh, locally. So just a nice little tool to have just in case I need it. Don't use it all that often at this point. Pardon me. Uh, then I have my accounts folder. And this is the last one I currently have on the front page. Uh, and in here sits my shoeboxed account, go.tagjag.com slash shoeboxed. I send all my receipts, all my business cards in there. They scan them, they organize them, they make it easy, and, and it's clean. And I love it. And I pay just like a couple hundred a year for it, but it's a business expense, so it's totally worth it. I mean, I'm not going to waste how many days of my life scanning in papers. Like, I can spend a couple minutes, fine, but like scanning in documents and doing OCR, uh, my, my time is worth way more than that. Uh, at least I'd like to believe so. My my AT and T account, my Xfinity account, Xbox Smart Glass in here, so I can get to my Xbox stuff. Uh, I've got my security systems in here. I've got my car system uh, where I can connect to the the uh, car. I don't know what you would call it, software in the console. I've got my radio thermostat uh, software in here so I can control the uh, thermostats in the house. You saw that video where I installed this. This is 
last year, I think. Um, this is before they had released the Nest thermostat, so I haven't upgraded yet. haven't really felt, felt the need. I have my Eventbrite app in here for any events that I go to that support it. My Hue app is in here. You saw me do my Hue review a few weeks ago. Still love that. FreshBooks account, 1Password is the app that I use to manage all my passwords. Uh, the new version, it, it's okay. The problem is they haven't updated the desktop version, so syncing kind of sucks right now. I'm not going to say 1Password's currently a waste of money, but you could probably wait a little while. They could have done a much better job with the rollout of 1Password. Not very thrilled about getting it for 7 bucks. Uh, I don't know if it was worth the money yet. Love the application. The problem is, is that right now my desktop is completely disconnected, so I, I don't know which software has the latest database anymore. It's it, They did a... Seriously, I would give them an I would give them an F for not updating the desktop application in line with the mobile application, not making it seamless for the users. They could have done a better job, uh, and I paid for it, so that I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, I've got a little printer uh, app here. Now this is a web app, as I demonstrated in my little printer video. The little printer sitting behind me. Let's see, give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and print out today's word. As it prints there. Uh, this is where I would control it. This is where I would see everything. It's an account, kind of, because I'm logged into my little printer. I have my GoDaddy account in there. Uh, now, if you are looking to save money on any kind of GoDaddy purchase, email me first. I'll send you the latest list of coupons. And so many of you guys have, have done that since mentioning it uh, a few weeks ago, just having you guys email me uh, with the uh, uh, need for GoDaddy coupons. I was looking for the word of the day, and apparently they don't do words of the day on weekends. Now that was fun. All right, uh, that's pretty much my accounts folder. Let's go ahead and move to page two. At the top, I have files. So uh, any kind of files I need to access remotely or share uh, with other computers, uh, I put those apps in here. Air sharing, probably one of the number one uh, file sharing apps available for iOS. I also use uh, photo access frequently, and I think this is one that I pulled up on the iPad video. Uh, it allows me to more easily browse photos on this device from any other device on my network. It's easy. You don't have to log in or anything. You just press the button, and then that's it. And you've created a web server dynamically, and you just browse to the IP address. If I need to transfer photos from one iOS device to any other computer. I use PhotoSync. That's a universal binary. In fact, I think they just updated it the other day. Really easy to tap and select which photos you want to share or entire albums uh, between PCs, Macs, other iOS devices. Uh, amazing. It's a, it's a great tool to have on hand. Uh, GoodReader, uh, one of the ultimate uh, file format readers that's available for iOS. And then Tonido, they recently updated this application. It is an easy way to browse media on your home network. Uh, and, and it'll transcode uh, uh, video files for you dynamically. So if you, ha if you want to get to media on your network, uh, it's really easy to do with Tonido. Uh, and they've evolved over time. Certainly not the same Tonido that I had featured a long time ago. And that, by the way, Tonido, that app is free. Live video. So if I want to stream live video, uh, or I guess even watch live video, uh, I would I would have the app in the folder. Uh, there are three Ustream apps, the recorder, the browser, and then the broadcaster. Okay, Ustream, I think it's time for you to get together. I have the ability to turn the iPhone camera into a webcam uh, uh, connected to any one of the... I'm sorry, I've got an itch on my nose. Someone's thinking about me. Uh, if I want to use the iPhone as a webcam, uh, I would use the web camera software on any one of the, the computers and then could use this this camera or this camera as a webcam, a, a little remote webcam. I think that was a, an app for five bucks, you know, just in case I wanted to do that. Uh, a, a blue cam, which allows me to control the camera by way of Bluetooth. No, don't use my current location. Here's my wallpapers folder, uh, just a handful of generics. Uh, I mean, there's a billion and one uh, wallpaper applications, and I, I, I just don't change it all that frequently. I, I'm really kind of plain. I mean, I just use patterns and designs. Um, I, I really haven't found a need to, uh, you know, go much further than that. This one's called Clippish, and it annoys the hell out of you with those splash screens. But with Clippish, you can go out to the web, and it'll find uh, uh, images that you can then doctor and change and add text to. Uh, I put that in the wallpapers folder. Some background stuff. Poolga is actually a website, poolga.com, uh, that has uh, uh, wallpapers that were specifically optimized for the iPhone screen. Oh, there's a nice one. If I wanted to go to a, a, a Star Wars or, ooh, Battlestar Galactica, Cylon Raider. And then from here, I could just tap to, to save the image and, 
it, it works just like a regular web page. Uh, so just a whole, whole bunch of default, uh, uh, or I guess not really default, just generic wallpaper applications. Uh, Airframe. Uh, this is one that basically turns the uh, phone into uh, a photo frame. Uh, do I want to rate the app? I hate when those apps ask for those questions. So if I wanted to do that, I would use Airframe. Put that in the wallpapers folder. Then I have sharing. So any kind of app that is uh, related to file sharing, like uh, Dropbox, SkyDrive, Box.net, uh, GoToMeeting is more of a screen sharing or, or meetings, Shareboard or Bump. It's in this folder. Uh, obviously, Google Drive is not in that folder because I have it in my Google folder. I have a travel folder uh, with a handful of apps that I use in, in relation to travel. Just Landed's kind of fun uh, when I'm picking someone up from the airport. Uh, I just type in their flight number, and then it'll tell me when to leave home because it'll keep an eye on uh, the traffic in between my house and the airport and tell me, hey, it's time to go so you can pick up the person on time not have to wait too long. So it's kind of a neat little app. Uh, I have a local folder. In here, some locally oriented apps uh, like Uber and Taxi Magic. Uh, uh, Call to Park is an application that Seattle or some stations use in Seattle. So instead of using my credit card at par parking stations, that it, I have this enabled, I can just use the application. It's easy. I don't have to whip out my credit card. Uh, Where to? Another great uh, app to help you discover what's around you. And then Yelp is installed in here as well. Gas Buddy, Insta Weather. Insta Weather is kind of fun. Um, you can. Uh, Superimposed is designed to be used in conjunction with uh, uh, Instagram, and with it, you can superimpose the current weather patterns of whatever city you're in over the image, export it directly to Instagram, you know, to make your Instagram images that much more fun. Uh, I have a tools folder, just kind of a random hodgepodge of tools that might do one thing or another. Uh, Gas Cubby. Um, is, is another one of those gas apps, which I could probably put in the other folder now that I look at it. Game Kit is kind of a collection of uh, typical uh, game uh, uh, tools that you would use, like dice and, and, and pieces and just various things that you might use with board games that you might not have actual pieces for. A speedometer, uh, a banner, a uh, displayer, uh, 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 my font and my real font, a couple of easy ways to generate uh, uh, fonts from... Uh, you're writing on uh, on the iPhone directly. Uh, App Box Pro, one of those like uh, 50 in one. Uh, I don't want push notifications. No, uh, all in one type of app apps. You know, 99 cents you get 50 apps. Appzilla being another one of those types of apps where I don't want to be posted. Ah, stop, close. Billions of apps. Okay, not that many, but you know they got stupid things like Stink Bomb. Okay, what the hell does this do? Okay, in three seconds it'll go off. Is that what the deal is? Hey, it went off. I don't know why I would ever use that, but hey, it's there. Uh, then I've got Mag I, uh, Magnify HD that turns the uh, the lens into a magnifying glass. So uh, if I wanted to get closer to something, I could and and not have to. I could use the photo zoom or the digital zoom on the camera. It's just this app is dedicated to being that. Hey, I might use it at some point. Then there's clipboard. Now this is the one that I featured in the. Uh, um, the I, what's on my iPad video, it's a universal binary, and it's like a multi-entry clipboard that you can use on iOS. And it'll run in the background, and you can copy and paste from different applications. Uh, so if you're looking for a better clipboard on iOS, use that app itself. And I, I the name, it's, it's I mentioned it in the other video, so I, I can't, I can't say which it is in particular. Let me just show you the icon, so if you find a, a clipboard app in the store, it will look something like that. I'm making sure I got the contrast on the screen just right. Okay. Now, moving on. Communications, or com, because communications was too long. Skype, Haytel, Tango, Magic Jack. You know, if I need to make free calls, I can. Bobsled from T-Mobile. Sparks, that connects to Campfire. Uh, chat room, which I don't use all that often. If I need to send a text message at some point in the future, if I need to schedule text messages, I use text later. Uh, say it, mail it is a, one of those that I can just talk to it and then it, it mails uh, you know the, the the message to somebody. TeamSpeak is also in here. Postagram, which I know many of you guys use to send me postcards from the vlog. And Hologram, it's kind of fun. It has a, a preset list of messages that you can swipe through so that you can just display this message to somebody as, as you're... Hey, I wish I was dead. Not like anybody would want to display that, or at least I hope not. Um, that's in there. It's communication, certainly. I have a notes folder, which I don't use all that often. Uh, if I wanted to create notes in Dropbox, I would use uh, Loke Notes 
or plain text and it'll automatically edit and put the, the text files into Dropbox for me, Evernote's in here as well, as well as Readle Docs uh, for document management and viewing. I have a shopping folder for Amazon, Price Check, although I don't know why Amazon doesn't unite those two uh, apps. Price Check is more for checking the price against many retailers in the Amazon app. You can check the price uh, against Amazon of a, a product that you're holding onto when you scan the UPC code. And of course, Amazon's app, you can also check into uh, everything else that's in your account uh, on Amazon.com. And I use Amazon almost religiously. Keyring is an app that I've talked about before. In Keyring, I have all my affinity cards in here. And so uh, instead of uh, keeping different, uh, you know where they have barcodes and you have to hand it uh, to people at the store like the clerks? This app keeps them all inside the application so they just need to scan the screen or just look at your number. There's my uh, Lego VIP card number. Uh, I also have a couple apps for my local grocery stores, eBay app, uh, Red Laser, Amazon Fresh, uh, that is, I, okay, no, I guess this is, is this a, I can't tell if this is a dedicated app or the web app. They've got both now, I think, although that one needs to be updated. Google Shoppers in here as well, though, again, this is another Google app that I just don't use all that often, uh, if at all, so I should probably just kill it now that I'm looking at it. Uh, I've got a food folder uh, that I don't use that often, uh, a beer and wine log, and I don't use this either, and I probably should. So if I run across a beer or wine I like, I can log it in here. I just forget, inevitably, uh, after I drink it. I'm like, it's good. I've got my Starbucks app in here. I also have Fruit Ninja in the food folder. So some fun and functionality. I had no other place to put Fruit Ninja. And I got that for free, and I've been playing it on the iPhone lately. I don't know why. It's just easy and fun to swipe and casual. I love those kind of games. Savings has a handful of coupon apps. Uh, you know, I've got a way to get to, you know, all the group buying coupons in here. Uh, you know, nothing really to, 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 you know, call out in particular. It's just a way of saving apps. I mistapped there. I have an app drops folder and I use a lot of these if I'm browsing, just kind of bored, like, Hey, what's free today? Oh, this one was dropped, you know, from $5 to nothing. Cool. The one that I check out of all these every day is apps gone free. Um, it's just easy, it's clean, and they generally pick the best of the Oh, the best of the best. Look, Sonic Jump is currently free. Like I said, that's probably a very popular game given that it's Sonic, and I found out it's free. So it's uncluttered, it's very, very simple, and out of all of them, it's the one that I check most frequently. I have a system folder uh, in here. It's Text Expander, Pastebot, another uh, way of sharing my clipboard with a Mac, uh, like a desktop computer, uh, and the Epson Print Manager, although I have an AirPrint-enabled Epson printer. I don't use that all that often, but if I need to, I can. App Switch gives me a few more details about what's running in the background on my iPhone, so if I needed to kill anything, I could, or certainly view any kind of background pro processes. Geekbench, GL Benchmark, uh, which I use you know, when a new uh, device comes out to, to see how it stands against others. I've got a network folder with the FCC test, the speed test. Uh, coverage map to get a better idea of what uh, other type of areas in my, or what type of, not people, but um, how do I explain this? So it'll show me how other systems, other wireless systems rate in any particular area in the U.S. I've also got a thing, which is kind of like an all-in-one network tool for home networks, so I can get a better idea of, you know, any kind of local area devices on the network, what they are, you know, what they do, their IP addresses, etc. I've also got uh, my home security system uh, that is tied into all the uh, computers that turn the webcams into uh, security cameras in here. That's called Witness, by the way. I did a video on that uh, a long time ago, so I'm not going to dive into it right now. I've got a finance folder with PayPal, my credit cards, my banks. I've got an entertainment folder with the Sling Player app, ITV, uh, Fandango, uh, you know, Cinex Player, which allows me to play differently formatted videos. Uh, you know, just generally entertainment types of applications in entertainment. Uh, astronomy, I've got a dedicated folder for this as well. A lot of popular apps in here, including Pocket Universe, Star Maps, uh, and Starlight. Sky Safari, another big one. Uh, the Calkers, this would be all my random calculators, including uh, tripula or Tipulator, uh, which allows me to better or more easily calculate the tip, especially if I'm with a party. A CalcBot, uh, one of the more fun calculators that's available for iOS, although you got to know that you can't really tilt this one. I thought you could, but no, I guess not. Maybe that was in another... I've got so many calculators installed. Um, probably need to slow down. I don't use the calculators all that often, but if I needed to, I could. Uh, a, a few fun calculators in here, though, as well, like a currency calculator. Uh, no, I don't want to review it. 
So I can easily uh, calculate if I'm traveling, you know, currency, uh, financials. Um, yeah, currency, financials. Yeah, they're kind of the same. Calculators, so that's why the folders are, are close to each other. I have a few extra clocks apps. Don't use them all that often, uh, but if I wanted a full-featured alarm application, I, I could find it in here. Not that exciting. Image fun. So uh, this is, oh, I can't, well, I'm thinking of if I could show you a couple of my favorites in here. Um, there's iLapse, which is it turns your iPhone into a kind of a time-lapse tool. Uh, mustached, which easily put, yeah, this is the one I'll show you here. Okay, let's go with that one. Let's take it. I'm going to take a picture. Give me a second. Let me take a picture of myself. Use that. And then the mustache goes there. I can put a mustache on myself. So that's I, or I'm sorry, mustached. Uh, but what I was going to show you is these apps were free at one point uh, called Face Bomb. And what you do with Face Bomb is you take a picture with at least two people in it, and what it'll do is it'll automatically swap the faces for you. It's the easiest way to do just that. It, it, it was free when I got it. It may not be free when you look at it, but I don't have any pictures in my library that I know of that I can show you that have two people in it. Right, give me a sec. Oh, well, I, I'll try this. All right, so there. It it tried to do it. All right, let me, give me a second. There's, there's a picture of Diana and her mom. I know that she's not going to... Okay. So what it did was it put Diana's mom's face on Diana automatically. Or I could rebomb it and it'll put Diana's face on Diana's mom. So it does it for you and you can tweak it and everything like that. That's face bomb. Face swap does the, the swapping. They're from the same company, but it's a variation on the theme. Best face swapping apps I found on iOS. Uh, in Scribbles. This is where if I needed to draw something on the screen, I would use any kind of the applications in here, including HW Mail. This one's fun. What you can do with this is you can write down here and then it'll put whatever you're writing there. So if I, if I have uh, words, I'm just obviously scribbling. It'll put those words up here and then you can press send and it'll actually take an image of what you've written here and send it in the mail. So it'll be like a handwritten email. Uh, it's kind of neat. Um, and that, again, uh, handwriting mail or HW mail. A couple other Scribble-like applications in there. I have a fun folder just for wacky reasons, uh, including Yancat, the Loraxer, uh, the uh, Kaleidocam. Now, this one could go in the camera folder, but I thought it was more fun. So it takes whatever's on, you know, it sees in the camera. You can see the ticks clocks and then turns it into a kaleidoscope pattern that you can take a picture of it and then save it to the folder and everything. Great little Kaleidoscope uh, application, Kaleidocam. Uh, fake color, I don't use that all that often, but it's there if I wanted it to. Uh, you know, you know, oh, I'm getting a call from, you know, someone you don't know. Oh, hello. Uh, some people want that as an excuse. It's in my fun folder. I have a photo view folder. Uh, don't use this one all that often either, but if I needed to, I could. Uh, photo hub is a universal application that was recommended uh, for me. And you can add your different accounts, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and it'll unite all of them here inside of one application, Photo Hub. And it, is, it, it's what it, it does what it does. I just haven't connected any of my uh, apps to, or my uh, social accounts to the uh, uh, to that particular app yet. Uh, photo Prox, so this would be photo processors, or processing that I'd need to do with any photos. And uh, in here, uh, a couple of things to point out, a one-bit camera, so you can make uh, monochromatic images uh, just with using black and white. Uh, I also have the Hope poster, so if you wanted to turn any image into like, you know, what you saw with the Obama Hope poster, you could use that application. Tune Paint, uh, Retromatic. Now this one is kind of fun, I just haven't had a chance to, to use it. I've tried it in, what you, in, in places, but it just didn't produce images that I thought thought were worth sharing. Uh, it basically can turn your photos into, see, I'm going to go to gallery, see if I have anything. Okay. They may, they may have uploaded from Instagram here. It looks like they just pointed off to the tag. So you can make images like this, just fun, retro like images. And it's pretty easy. Percolator. I demonstrated that on the other video, so I'm not going to go into that. Uh, and then vector pro, if you want to vectorize any kind of image, this is what you would use. That is not a bitmap. That is a vector image of Diana's face. Uh, and of course I could have tweaked it a bit further, but if you need to create vector images on your iPhone, you would use that app. All right, moving on. 
Photo edits. Uh, if I need to edit photos in here, I've got iPhoto, Snapseed, uh, Auto Adjuster, which I'm a big fan of, Aviary, which I'm also a fan of. Group Shot is an easy way of uh, taking uh, group images. So it'll take a series of photos and then you can swap uh, one face with another face, but not like the other one. If like, let's say in one image, one person's blinking or their head blurs, you can replace that part of the image with an image that turned out well. So group shot will help you take better group shot images. Uh, that's something that you may want to note. Also have Photoshop Express in here. Uh, let's see here. Are we were uh, photo edits animators so if i want to create animated gifs i use gif me uh, i might also use loop cam and then of course cinemagram is a lot of fun too uh and with cinegram cinema cinegram cinemagram you basically take a, a picture and then just choose to animate part of it not the whole thing so if i go to me and show you there's one, a cinemagram i took of myself so the whole image is still except for what i decided to animate my feet kind of swinging around fun so you can follow me there on cinemagram although i don't use it all that often it, it definitely works really well uh, i also have comicals so browsing comics uh, or creating comic like images would be in here uh, nothing really to to point out uh, that you know i think is absolutely amazing you should see noisers if i wanted to play around and, and make noise with my uh, phone i would use this application cosmovox is a lot of fun let me go and make sure i'm not muted turn it up a bit so what you do with Cosmovox is you basically, as I as I move it around, it's like a digital theremin. So you actually, depending on which position the phone's in, it's going to change the pitch and the volume, and you can adjust it. Kind of fun. Uh, other apps in there like that. Uh, let's see here. Music. So if I wanted to create music, uh, these are some of the apps I might use. I featured Figure in the iPad app, so I won't go into that. I also featured Chaosolator and the Tenorion. Uh, love those. If I wanted a, a metronome, I would use this application called Beats. Uh, a couple of other fun ones in here include Instrumental. Now this one hasn't been updated in a while. But you can drag little characters around, and each one of them has different sounds. And then, you know, depending on which one you go with, you can uh, basically create different dynamic music with different sound effects. Fun, probably more for kids, but hey, I'm a kid at heart when it comes to applications. Uh, moving on to audio fun. So this would be, you know, fun things you could do with audio, like a virtual rain stick, which hasn't been updated forever, but I love the sound of a rain stick. If I make sure the volume's up. Sorry. Okay, all my seeds at the bottom. I just love that sound. I had a rain stick at one point. I haven't had one forever. Um, so I've got that in there. Also the uh, more cowbell app. So, so if I need more cowbell, I can get to it at any point in time. Easy enough. Uh, voice mod. If I wanted to modify, you know, um, the uh, they say to use your headphones, but you could, okay, so I could listen to what's going on around me and it, unfortunately it's not going to pick up because it's designed to be you know, listen to out of the headphones, but you can hear a voice modification live in in real time. Uh, let's see your music fun uh, variations on the theme, including a couple of apps that I featured in the "What's on My iPad" video, so I won't go into it. Node Beat uh, being a fun one. Sound Snap, or I'm sorry, Sound Drop, uh, and then Bloom uh, Ocarina is also in the music fun folder. Uh, pianists, so any kind of sounds that would be like a, a piano or an organ would live in here, including Magic Piano. I love that one. Uh, radio. So if I want to listen to music or identify what music I'm listening to, uh, the app would be in here, including the Cloud Player, Spotify, Pandora. I mean, that naturally I would have those. Shazam, SoundHound, Stitcher, AOL Radio, uh, TuneIn Radio. Uh, I don't use them all that often. The, the one I would probably use most frequently would be the Amazon Cloud Player or potentially, because that's where I keep all my MP3s, Spotify or Pandora. The other apps are there case i'm like i'm bored with whatever i'm listening to here i'm just going to tune into another station i got a music games folder including tap tap uh, auditorium uh, is that how it is Aud auditorium yeah auditorium but like audi like you're listening it's kind of a play on words uh let's see here that's a good one remotes all my remotes like my sonos controller my vnc controller uh touchpad mobile mouse which turns the iphone into a pointing device and then the parallels remote tool by the way parallels is currently still available ten dollars off go dot com slash parallels 10 if you want to uh you know save money on parallels i use it all the time uh moving on 
trivials. So uh, any kind of trivia game might go in there. I don't play them all that often, but if I need a casual game and want to play trivia, I don't have to re-download it. I know it's right there. Sims and AR. So any kind of augmented reality app or sim application might live in here. Air Coaster, probably one of uh, my favorite uh, roller coaster application, especially like sim uh, that's out there. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, played with roller coaster sims. They're a lot of fun. Love that. Nostalgics. Now this folder is almost full. If, oh no, it is full because I am a big nostalgic gamer. And on here we have Battleship, Connect Four, games that I love playing. Uh, Tetris, of course, Light Bright, Wooly Wooly. My grandparents had a Wooly Wooly when I was a kid. So this was a board and you would basically take this pin with a magnet on the end and you would drag these uh, pieces of, I don't know what they would be, iron. Uh, you would drag them around and you could give Wooly Wooly a mustache or a uh, wacky hairstyle. And so when they released it for the iPhone, I had to get it. Uh, an Etch-A-Sketch application, Mancala, love that game. C64 emulator, uh, DOS emulator. Uh, I also have Minesweeper, Spy vs. Spy, and my uh, Act Activision anthology, which of course I also pulled up in the What's on My iPad video. Then I have Cardies. So any kind of card games I might want to play? Solitaire. I've got, I just use Sol Free. Uh, it's pretty basic. If I wanted to play uh, Hearts, though, uh, I've, I haven't found a good Hearts game, uh, card game, on uh, iOS yet. Not really looking for one though. It's just, if I have, if I find it, great. I've got a racing folder with a handful of uh, really cool racing games. Uh, I'm big into racing, but just casually, not really a, a, a career player, as in building, you know, app, you know, uh, an account in in one particular racing app or another. I've also got a separate driving apps. So these aren't really racing games, but they involve cars. I've got a vehicles uh, folder. Sorry, that wasn't. A, I said. In the drivers app, I meant drivers folder. If that's I misspoke, I apologize. I've been doing this for a little while now, so I will continue. Vehicles, uh, some you know, uh, games mostly uh, having to do with vehicles that aren't necessarily cars or not necessarily airplanes. I've got flyers, so games that are related to flying. Spaceships, so anything that has a spaceship as uh, you know your uh, your what you're controlling goes in there. Sci-fi, anything that's not a spaceship but kind of sci-fi-ish, including Star Wars Trench Run, one of my favorites. Sports, I don't have a lot of sports in here, but I can play lawn darts, uh, Sumo Master, Star Dunk, Gold, uh, bowling. It's got its own separate uh, folder because you know it's easy to fun, uh, it's easy and fun to to flick and, and bowl, like with arcade bowl or uh, downhill bowling, ramp champ. Another classic. Paddlers, so this would be kind of like Pong-like games. Then I have Balls, so anything that might be having a ball on the screen. Those are the Balls games. Uh, piecers, the, I don't know, like individual pieces that might play on a, on a field of sorts or any kind of, uh, you know, game that might look like it has individual pieces. Tossers, anything that you might, uh, you know, toss, like a Flip Cup. Uh, which I wouldn't say is an amazing game or anything like that, but let's see here, timed, uh, play, play, there we go. And then you're supposed to flip the cups and get them to stand on their end. I uh, missed it, so I've got to do it again. Stupid casual games. Uh, I, it's my uh, my phone is full of them. Mazers, anything that would be maze-like, including a couple of labyrinth uh, games, which aren't very easy to play in this orientation. Uh, tilters, anything that you would tilt the phone back and forth to play, like Cube Runner, a classic. I don't know if you guys have ever played this one. Really, really easy uh, start game. So you just basically don't touch uh, any of those blocks. I better be careful. Can you guys even see that from where you are? Wow, I can't believe I've made it that far, but without even looking at it. Uh, a couple other variations on those themes. Then I have tablers, anything that might play on a table, including a mahjong. Uh, the uh, Motion X Poker, which has some of the best uh, dice uh, on any platform that I've seen. Like, to, to be able... I'm just on Zen Roll here. If I press Roll, they roll around. Nice little clean animations. Uh, and I could just use it as a dice game. If I'm playing a game somewhere else. As in, like, on the table itself, I could use the virtual dice there. And then, of course, they've got gameplay inside that app as well. A couple other pool games. Air hockey uh, apps are in here. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. Puzzles. Nothing really to call your attention to here other than Zenbound 2, which I've featured in a lot of my uh, hardware reviews because it's 3D, very graphically intensive. Um, 
I don't know if I really want to dive into this too deeply because I know this is a very popular game that a lot of you guys have already heard of. But if you're looking for a game that to really can take advantage of the screen and the graphics quality on the iPhone 5 or any of your iOS devices, this would be it. Spinning around 3D objects until you've covered a certain portion of them and it's fun. Zenbound 2. Worth the money if you have to pay for it. Uh, Enigmas, uh, puzzle light games. Uh, a recent favorite in here is Gyro. Got it for free. I mean, from one of those free my apps types of things. Uh, so what you do with this is very, very simple. Uh, you don't really have to think about it. I'm uh, just going to play arcade mode. What you do is you, you spin the wheel to align with whatever dot is flying in. So blue goes to blue. Got to get the blue to go to that. Got to get the yellow, spin it around. And that's it. That's all you do. And then it gets faster and more challenging and everything. Now I can't stop. Fun game. Love those types of games. Uh, leveler. So any kind of game that is level bound. Uh, Pudding Monsters. I don't know if you guys have picked up the new one. This is from the guys who made Cut the Rope. Uh, I've already beaten the game, uh, at least to the, the levels that they've currently been, you know, had in in the game. They're working on, like, the next level. Yeah. The, the, I think they had, like, three levels. Yeah, three, two, one. Yeah, I played them all through. Got three stars in each one. Love those kind of casual games. Uh, Totemo. Another fun one. Um, haven't played it in a while, but used to really like playing this one, especially if I was bored. Totemo. Uh, I'm not going to dive into it too deeply because I know I'm running a little long on this video. Uh, some jumpies. So anything that might bounce or jump and fly around, like tiny wings would be in here. Mega jump, doodle jump, poppy jump. Uh, number games. Uh, Glow burst, Super 7. Sudoku, which I never use. or I'm sorry, Sudoku. I always say that wrong. I'm not a... Not a math guy, generally speaking. Uh, then we have Wordy, so any kind of word applications, like uh, friends with words, uh, or words with friends. Uh, hopefully my friends have words. Scrabble goes in here. Uh, to across, a crosswords app. A spell tower, which I got for free uh, from one of those Starbucks redeems. Uh, and then Letterpress, which I haven't used. I haven't played as much. Um, I like that game, but it's not... It's, it's fun, but the problem with playing word games is that you might have friends with these types of apps installed, which will allow you to look up uh, combinations of letters that turn into words for higher points. So word finders or anything that allows me to uh, create anagrams goes in here for any word games or, you know, just wanting to know, hey, can I create an anagram? Also, Instatag. I, I did pay money for this. Instatag supposedly will help you find the top 40 uh, uh, in, in other features uh, and tags related to um, the... Uh, 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 Instagram, what's happening, let's see here, top 40, love, Insta good, uh, photo of the day, these are just general Instagram tags that you can create, so if you're wanting to find it out, and this is a, some people say it's a good way to get new Instagram followers is to use tags, I just haven't. Creatures is a game folder full of, you know, creatures or just random stuff like Koi Pond, this isn't a game, but it's a, it's a pond that my finger can swipe across and you can hear the insects in the background and the water sounds. As I'm scaring the fish away. Sorry, Koi. Uh, Where's My Water is in here as well, which of course is a game that many of you guys have probably have installed. Uh, figurines. Uh, games that are have figures in them. My, one of my favorites. Hasn't been updated in a while. Um, Mr. Space. Oh, sorry. Let's do this again. Mr. Space. So I have to move the guy to where he's not going to get stomped when the uh, ceiling falls. So it's kind of a, it's a puzzler, very casual, love those types of games, goes in there. So I just play it for five minutes, drop out, do something else. Interlockers would be a folder of applications that are kind of brickish in nature. Uh, I've got Tetris in here, uh, a couple of other uh, puzzle type games where you have to fill a few different cubes. Uh, Tiki Premium, Topple, this one was a, a, a popular app for a while, NG Moco makes it. Uh, and it's, it's one of those apps where, you know, you've got a stack of these shapes where you have to balance out and, you know, do the right thing, you know, according to whatever you need to do. Blockies is right next to it. Kind of, it's almost like interlockers, I guess. Um, but you don't interlock these blocks. You either pop them, move them around or in different patterns or whatnot. I don't play a lot of them, but they're there if I want them to be. And at some point, you know, I may go through and just delete them all and then start from scratch. I just haven't done that. Holidays is the last folder I have. Cut the Rope Holidays, uh, Charlie Brown Christmas, which I put on here again just to listen to it and listen, you know, read the book and kind of get in the holiday spirit as I did. And then pretty soon I will delete those apps uh, once more. Newsstand at the very end with nothing in it because I don't really use Newsstand. That is what is on my iPhone.
Whew! Okay, gonna take a breath. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, you know, sorry I skipped over something that you wanted to know more about. A lot of those apps I also have on my iPad. Next year, I may have cleaned out my iPhone and gotten rid of many of the apps that I don't play or use all that often. Uh, unfortunately, as I demonstrated in an earlier uh, uh, separate video, uh, there's a bug that I can't view my previously downloaded applications. If I go into the purchased uh, uh, option in the App Store to look at what I've previously purchased, the App Store will inevitably crash. I'll show you. It'll, it'll crash again. It was a separate video I did. It's a huge bug. It's been bugging me for certain. Um, so I, I, I hope to clear off my iPhone next time around to then show you everything I do have on my iPhone uh, beyond just the icons. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me. I appreciate, again, all the likes, all the shares, everything you guys do with our community. I'm very happy to do this for you and to give you recommendations You know, over uh, the coming months uh, leading up to the next What's on My iPhone uh, for next year. Uh, certainly, if you have app recommendations to make, please make them. Uh, again, the links that are in this video description are specifically related to how you can generate free Amazon cards, iTunes cards, PayPal money, uh, and, and so on, including uh, getting free applications that would normally, or getting paid applications for free. They would normally cost you money. I'm all about, you know, finding good things, and, and when I do, I do share those features and finds with the world. Usually within the Locker Dome Daily Report on a daily basis, so I hope you do watch that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, if you have anything you want to say, feel free to comment. But again, I just want to say the only reason I did this video was be see it crashed. That I don't like that it crashed, but I like the fact that you made it all the way through this video. Thanks again. When you do this, it means so much to me. It just shows me that you appreciate the things that I'm doing. I just spent an hour of my time with you, and I know you've spent an hour of your time with me. And so let's just keep this thing going because I think we've got something good. Keep following me on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, wherever you want to follow me, I am there. And uh, we'll have fun over the coming year until the next uh, What's on My iPhone video. Of course, I'm going to be producing a lot of videos in between, so don't tune out. Well, except for now. Now you can go watch another one of the videos that I've done. We'll eat you later.